You know, for weeks, it has been the soundbite that has crystallized the problems between the New York City mayor, Bill de Blasio, of course, and the NYPD. Now, it came from police union chief Pat Lynch. This immediately after two officers were ambushed and killed in Brooklyn last month. There's blood on many hands tonight. That blood on the hands starts on the steps of City Hall in the office of the mayor. And certainly we've seen a lot of back and forth since then, but finally we're getting some sampling about where the public stands on this. New poll out, and it takes the temperature of city voters on that soundbite and more here on the fractured relationship between the cops and the mayor and how the police are doing their jobs or not doing them. And I want to bring in Andrew right now. It, it, really an interesting snapshot here in terms of not just what we just heard, Andrew, but also from the either the sick outs or at least the slowdowns to a lot more. And it's that. really the first firm numbers we've seen since the, all of that began, Rich. And Pat Lynch didn't hold back his feelings about Mayor de Blasio. The public apparently not holding back about Pat Lynch. 77% in the new Quinnipiac poll say Lynch's comments were too extreme disapproval that holds across racial, gender, ethnic, and political lines. Now, after those comments came the turning of the backs by the NYPD at funerals for both officers. And again, the public says we disapprove, 69% disagreeing with the NYPD's actions. But there is a split on who's to blame for that fractured relationship. 45% of New Yorkers blame the mayor, 43% blame the cops. That despite slight approval over how the mayor has handled the police. Now, here are among the comments that got so many NYP officers upset with the mayor. Shalane and I have had to talk to Dante for years about the dangers that he may face. We've had to literally train him as families have all over this city for decades in how to take special care in any encounter he has with the police officers who are there to protect him. And yet, despite that comment and others, 47% of New Yorkers say the mayor, judging by his statements and actions, does support the NYPD. 37% think he does not. There's a big divide in the city, though, among those who say the mayor does support the cops. Only 36% of white New Yorkers see it that way. Compare that with 69% of blacks and 53% of Hispanic city residents. There's a political split, too. 21% of Republicans think de Blasio supports the NYPD. 58% of Democrats think de Blasio supports them. And geographically, just 23% of folks on Staten Island say the same thing. That's far and away the lowest numbers among the five boroughs. Then there's the NYPD slowdown on arrests and ticketing, exemplified here by this video of an officer car surfing and hurting himself instead of policing. 56% of city residents believe the NYPD is engaged in a deliberate slowdown. Only 27% think the downturn in tickets and arrests is out of officer concerns for their own safety, which is what their union has said. And if it's proven that the slowdown is deliberate, nearly 6 in 10 city residents say police officers should be punished. Some other quick conclusions from the poll, 66% say no excuse for the death of Eric Garner, 63% say t cops are tougher on black New Yorkers than they are on whites, and 70% consider police brutality a very or somewhat serious problem in the city. Rich? All right, Andrew, thank you. Um, first off, anybody surprised by the numbers? Love to see the leading questions asked by the uh, the uh, wonderful. No, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew said it just as they appeared in the questionnaire as to where they put fault here, where they put, and it's a mixed bag. And I think the important thing was depending on the perspective of the person. But Donald, this all comes um, in the backdrop of the other storyline that's coming out of this. Obviously, there's a contract issue, um, and that's been at least a big part of this. But now there's also a union leadership question that's going on. And it's public information that there's been fighting going on, sometimes almost physical, apparently, behind closed doors, as to the leadership issue on this. Rank and file. I, I think the public might be surprised. If you combine blacks and Hispanics, they're now the majority of the NYPD police force. And, um, and, and apparently the majority of the city. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why it's those numbers from the poll are very... Uh, polarizing numbers but you have to understand most people that deal with the NYPD happen to be people of color now that could be a good thing that could be a bad thing you have to understand Pat Lynch the president of the PBA he is first playing to his base is his audience and so that's why he jumped out there with the blood on your hands but I don't think he anticipated the full damage of what would come out of that. So as of right now, the mayor of New York is winning the battle of goodwill. But, but do you think the problem that Lynch has run into, and I believe, uh, again, talking about this every night and getting sampling from folks, is it 
because I remember the day after he said it. I mean, we talked about this day after he said it. Some of us might have grimaced saying he went too far, but I know a lot of other folks who said, yeah. Is it that he doubled and tripled down on it? Is it that he kept going with it, that he overplayed his hand? Or is it that he said it in the first place? Uh, I really believe that Lynch was delivering for his membership. And I believe that many of his members agree with that sentiment. I mean, that's just the way that I see it. Many police officers feel that the mayor of New York has sold them out. I just don't think Lynch gets it. And I think he's, and I think he's off where the pulse of New Yorkers are. Look, he might have thought that de Blasio was anti-police because he was critical of police tactics during the, his mayoral reign, uh, run last year. But he ran on that, on that because New Yorkers are frustrated with the police. And then, and then Lynch turned to the public, basically trying to get some support, and the public's not there with him. I mean, they, they think changes need to, be, to come in the, in the policies that the NYPD is instituting. And then all of this, we're not getting enough love from the mayor. We're going to turn our backs on the mayor. Like, I think people are saying that's garbage. No, that's not, not getting enough love. That's how the heck do you throw us under the bus and talking about your, your kid and the special plans to, to deal with the cops. Because, look, let's, 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 let's let elephant in the room. Bill de Blasio is an anti-establishment, left-wing, Sandinista type guy. This guy was never a fan of the police. He was never a fan of law and order. This guy cringed and, 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 and turned up his nose at police and police tactics since he was in his 20s. He doesn't like cops. And he so he meant the, every he syllable the of that. the policies of the NYPD. He ran on that with stop and frisk. But and there was why? a problem in the city like last year. Because what, people didn't like it. But what you're seeing here, I think, is they're enough already with the Pat yeah. Lynch. Enough already. We want to be protected. We want police to protect you. We want you to all get along. That's what you're seeing in these polls. And de Blasio doesn't help himself by saying, well, I can't apologize for something I fully believe. Just shut up already. Yeah. You know, what, what is and that? And the thing is, he, the smartest thing he ever did was... Um, Reverend Sharpton magically has disappeared from the public eye, yeah. okay, for the last three weeks. I think he hasn't put um, the First Lady front and center on this, which reminds people of the Nordlinger and, and all the other stuff that goes away, uh, attached with it. But for me, it was something different. It wasn't even the backs turning at the funerals, which I thought was bad. It was two things. Passing around a petition to try and get officers. It turns out only 4% of the officers actually signed the petition, by the way. And the second thing is, who was Pat Lynch? to decide when they were going to make stops, when they were going to follow through on the... Uh, when the public says, time out a second, the two of them can fight with each other. But if arrests are down 90% here, and they're deciding when they're going to do it, not the commanders or the police chiefs or, or one police plaza, is not the commissioner, but now Pat Lynch, the union guy, is going to tell them when they're allowed to start making arrests again? Now you're talking public safety. You lost me, Pat. And I, I think, my sense at least, that's kind of what happened here, is that he definitely overplayed his hand, and somebody's finally telling, you know, like Scott said to the mayor, just stop talking, right? You're not making it better. Just stop talking, right? Now, the last thing on this is Governor Cuomo. Um, it was interesting. I saw um, at a press conference de Blasio saying, you know what, he should worry about the state, and we got the city. I got this under control. What's your gut say? Does Cuomo get involved to repair this rift whether the mayor wants it or not? Well, he's already met with, uh, with Pat Lynch and, and Ed Mullins uh, of the Sergeant's uh, Benevolent Association. This is Governor Cuomo, after all. I mean, he knows, you know, let's cut through the chase. He knows what's best for all of us. And so if he can score political points, now that should make you happy. <laughs> if, if he can score political points, he's going to score political well, points. Yeah. But he knows what's best for him. Yeah, right. And, and my suggestion, <laughs> Good point. My Good suggestion point. is he won't get in the middle of this because he likes having de Blasio out. Remember this 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 competition for the Democratic He'll Party. He'll undercut Bill de Blasio. You just let him hang out has. there. He's already got the best of him. He's yeah. what, 3-0 yeah. against yeah. de Blasio? You want to give de Blasio a way out, though. I mean, without having to get too dirty or too much dirtier than he already has with it, if Cuomo comes in, it'll no, hurt it him doesn't. politically. It will it'll won't make him look good, it ends but it would give his, him it a way out of it. It makes him look very weak. If the governor has to step in when you're the mayor of New York City? But does, what makes him look weaker? Having Cuomo step in or having the, the NYPD yeah. continue to turn their backs? And also, this point. is after the, what we talked about last night, guys. The police commissioner going to Charlie Rose and basically saying, yeah, you know, I, he didn't say the words, I'm overstating, but Al Sharpton basically shouldn't have been on that stage. Um, um, also, I don't think the idea of uh, Nordlinger uh, being around here in any capacity was smart as well. You said it yourself. He's got to be careful that he doesn't repeat the problems that he had with Rudy where he overstepped them. But at the same point, de Blasio is so weakened right now. You know, you're right. One more person who steps on this and says they're in charge, kind of. Hmm. Okay, when we come back, 
We're going to turn to the race for the White House. Potential GOP candidates, they're gaining momentum, some of them and others. Some are wondering if they are or even should get in. Christie, Bush, even Romney making headlines. We'll also ask the table who else they think not only may get in, but might have a fighting chance. Stay with us.